As a child, I read immense amount of books. But growing up, I suddenly switched to the digital era. So I swapped my books for my phone or my laptop. Over the past few years during the COVID period, I happened to pick up a book again to escape from this digital era. So you do come full circle in life. Reading in school felt like an obligation to me. It was a period of time when your teachers forced you to read certain books or you had a reading list that you were to go through. And anything that I feel like is an obligation is something that I just do not abide by. Reading now feels more like an inspiration rather than an obligation. And I think that's what it should be for everyone. If you're one of those kind of people who wants to really read but can't find the time to or just doesn't know how to go beyond five pages, I was there. Over the past four years, I have read only books that have been academically assigned to me, which basically means I read textbooks, I read reading lists and basic things like that, or rather just skimmed through them or just stared at them in class while people were reading. Nothing really made me feel the urge to pick up a book and read. It felt like an obligation that was given to me by this academic institution that I was studying in. Let me break this down into six methods that helped me smoothly transition between going from zero books in four years to four books a month. Now reading four books a month is not a compulsion, but it's something that I just started off with. I had a lot of time on hand, the COVID period was going on and it was very easy for me to pick up one book and jump to another because I was in the zone. You can obviously go at whatever speed you want. I do not read four books a month anymore, however I wish I would, but it just doesn't practically happen. Set times. I know this may sound a little ridiculous, but setting a time for when you would want to read is very important to initially start and give yourself that push. I began with reading in the morning, right after I woke up or came back from a workout, anything that basically helped me get in the flow. I am more of a morning reader, so I prefer reading in the morning rather than reading in the night before bed, but you can pick whatever suits you. Setting a time helps your body fixate your mind in a situation where you're meant to read, so you know you have to and then you're in the zone. Setting goals that are more realistic such as reading 10 to 15 minutes a day or reading 10 pages a day makes it a lot easier to actually get the habit started rather than deciding oh I'm going to read 24 books this year or anything of that sort. Okay, so to address this, there's a huge misconception around reading where you're supposed to be in this aesthetic setting with dim lighting, good music in the background, just a very calm and vibey feel. It's basically not meant to be like that. When you set your standards that high, you're never going to be able to achieve them. So setting yourself up to the idea that you could read in any nook and corner of your room, it does not have to be a reading corner, it does not have to be the coziest place. Yes, it is nicer if the ambience suits your reading, but it's not a necessity. So you do not have to end up at a cafe with a coffee and a book. You can happen to read this in your room while having breakfast or whatever it may be. Do not set yourself up to standards that you cannot achieve on an everyday basis because that's going to dilute your idea of reading and just make it so much harder to achieve. You do not have to finish every book you read. Now, this is very important to understand that there are a lot of books that you could clearly DNF. You do not have to finish reading them. You can just skip over the first few 50 pages if you do not like it, leave the book. There are a lot of books that I started, especially classics that people abide by, that become people's guide and bible that I just don't relate to. And I think it's very okay to understand that not every book is for every person. So even if it's in a top 100 list, even if it's your favorite author whose book you don't like, it's absolutely okay to skip through and jump to the next. You do not have to feel guilty about not finishing a book. It's like reading a blog post. You can just skim through it if you don't like it and move on. A good method to use for this is after reading 50 pages, if you still can't get hooked onto the book, then I'd suggest that you will leave the book or you just skim through chapters that you really like. This works for non-fiction books. However, in fiction, if just 50 pages can't hook you on, then that's not a book for you. Carry a book everywhere you go. Now this is something that I recently started. I've started carrying a book everywhere I go, even if I'm not meant to read that book, if I don't have the time to read it. Just having a book in my bag gives me that option that if I ever get a little amount of time, I can read. And having a book in my bag makes me feel like, okay, maybe I can just swap using my phone while I'm waiting for a friend or doing whatever else and read a book instead, read a couple of pages, do something. Uh, in most cases, I would carry a non-fiction book because I feel like I can just read about 5 to 10 pages without having to get hooked and just get like some matter out of it. Whereas fiction, I do have to indulge in the story. So it's very difficult for fiction to be one of your carry-on books unless it's a very light read. Reading for enjoyment versus reading for information. 
So now there are basically two categories that you can function with. So reading for enjoyment is when you're reading for your own pleasure, when you're reading books like fiction, you're reading books that basically want you to indulge in the story. And reading for information would be something like non-fiction where basically you're trying to grasp some amount of knowledge from it. Actively reading really helps your mind remember what you've read. Even if you're never going to go back to it, at least the fact that you highlighted it is going to stay in your mind. So doing this for non-fiction books is very essential, I would say so. Um, because I do forget a lot of times what the book was about. Uh, but I do remember these certain highlights even if I don't remember the entire context of it. So having this kind of database or system where you can st actively store your highlights basically helps me go back and just like refresh whenever I need to but also in the moment keeps those points very highlighted in my mind. Once you've built yourself a reading habit, beyond the luxury of reading for hours, you should be able to read in short periods of time because there are going to be chances where you cannot make time for like a one hour reading session, but you could just squeeze in about a 10-15 minute session and if your mind is used to picking up a book and reading, this will come very naturally to you where you will be able to read for 10-15 to 15 minutes straight and then move on. A lot of times when you're starting off reading, only 10-15 to 15 minutes was not enough for you to get hooked to a book. But eventually, once you're in the habit of reading, something like this can really help. So the first book that I started reading when I just got out of my reading slump last year was The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Now, this book basically I read at the right time when I was in a stage where I really needed the kind of advice that he was giving. So it really helped me get out of the situation that I was in. Now, this book is very subjective to people that I have friends who like it, I have friends who don't. But again, each book to its own. So this is one of the books that I started off with. Start off with a book that you know that will basically get you hooked onto, something that you resonate with. Not everyone wants to start with non-fiction, but I did read a lot of non-fiction last year. Now there's a few books that I happened to DNF because I just could not get myself to read beyond a few pages. And those books all turn out to be classics. So I read, I tried reading three classics that I basically just could not get myself to finish. And these are all books that people have absolutely loved. So the fact that I didn't like it shows that the books meant for different people and not everyone reads the same kind of books. Even if it's your favorite person recommending it, some books just don't resonate with you. So one of them was The Design of Everyday Things, which is basically about um, how design started and the fundamentals of it. I found it very textbook-like, so I just did not happen to finish it. The next book is The Art of War. A lot of people abide by this book. It's like a bible to art and various other things. I just didn't like the style of writing and I didn't understand the book necessarily. So I just moved on. The other is a classic, A Tale of Two Cities. Now Charles Dickens is a wonderful writer. Everybody loves him. His writing is just a little harder for me to get through. And I could not, just could not get myself to finish that damn book. But of course I do know the story so it just, it's fine. It's okay. <laughs> it happens. To run through all the six points that I mentioned, set times for yourself to read, give yourself a 10 pages per day goal, find a place to read in your house, cafe, college, wherever you wish. Read actively, which basically means take notes, highlight, do various other things that will help you remember what the book was about and that way you will be hooked enough to read beyond. Carry a book everywhere you go. This is very important initially because having a book in your bag always gives you an alternative in times of when you're waiting for something or you have that 10-15 minute gap that you can squeeze in. Uh, don't feel like you have to finish a book. It's very important that if a book does not resonate with you, you skip on. You need to know when to quit. And read for enjoyment or for information. Know what you're reading for. Reading for information can sometimes feel like an obligation like how we felt in school. But most of the times, reading for entertainment can help you get out of your reading slump. Reading is not something that you're destined to love or hate. It's something that can grow on you. It's something best done out of inspiration instead of obligation. Don't make it feel like a chore. Make it feel like an activity that you voluntarily applied for. Uh, reading is basically like an escape system from the digital world today. And once you get hooked onto the idea of doing it, you'd really enjoy it. Everyone doesn't have the time to do activities that they're not interested in, and that's exactly how I was. But making time, even 10 minutes a day, to read basically changed my perception of a lot of things. 
it got me hooked back into the habit of writing it got me hooked back into the idea of constantly gaining information and learning and various other things there's a book on literally every topic in the world so there is always going to be something that you're interested in all you have to do is find that right match before you decide to plunge it